Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a quick look at a brand new 2023 Sabre 37 FLL 5th wheel. This is a front living room, rear bedroom with a loft 5th wheel. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of the RV, and then we'll close it up at the end and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are now up inside the brand new 2023 Sabre 37 FLL model here. And we're gonna start here in the front living room area. As you've seen on the floor plan that was up a second ago, front living room, rear bedroom, rear loft, kind of kitchen and bath in the middle. So starting up front here, we have a large TV across the front section, quite a few cabinets and a couple drawers. You also have an electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. Right now I just have the flame part on, but you could also turn on the space heater part as well. There's electric outlet and USB charger port on each side of the TV as well. Now the two opposing sofas here are actually on slide outs. They are 12 volt slides, so you push a button, they come in and out. These two sofas do actually flip out and make into beds. So you could sleep an extra two, three, four guests up here, depending on their size. Um, so you could have some extra adults up here if you wanted to. Now new for 2023 is going to be the wood color, the floor color, and the wallboard. And then you'll also notice a difference in the windows. They got kind of a mirrored tint to them, uh, where last year's version didn't. So a little different there as well. Now looking straight at your large TV, you have your theater seat area here. This is a manual theater seat, but it does have the lights built in and it also has heat and massage as well. All vinyl floor on your main subfloor, but they do have a little bit of carpet kind of finishing out some edges around the slides. There's an electric outlet, USB charger ports back here as well. Kind of looking up at your ceiling here, you have ducted AC. There's two speakers up here in the living room ceiling. You can see your AC return right here. They are currently using Furion ACs. You also have some LED accent lighting running down your ceiling length. Decent amount of shelf space here behind your theater seat. 110 volt ceiling fan instead of a 12 volt version. And for most of the blinds, they're using the zebra shade. There are a couple that do not have blinds, as you can see up top above the slides, kind of like the little side skylights. Stepping down into our kitchen area here, the refrigerator and dinette table are all on a slide as well. The dinette table, you have two freestanding chairs. There's a little bit of storage in the chairs. And then you have a bench, and the bench also has some storage in it as well. Over here, you have the large 12 volt Everchill refrigerator. I believe this is around 16 cubic feet, if I remember correctly. Uh, and you have a nice size pantry there as well. Over here in your kitchen area, you do have kind of a little peninsula that comes out where you could put a couple bar stools if you wanted to. There's also some storage underneath of there as well. You have electric outlet and your propane leak detector on the side here. They do a really nice heavy duty solid surface countertop as well. Not sure which brand it is, but it kind of reminds you of a Corian type of counter. Quite a bit of overhead storage right here. And then you also have more overhead storage above your microwave and they use a large microwave as well. 
Now with that overhead storage being pretty tall and up there kind of high, looking down here, there is a little storage under the sink, but there's also a little flip out step stool that's kind of built in, kind of folds out and giving you an extra, I don't know, probably six or eight inches of height there to kind of reach something. Then you have three drawers on the left, along with a large drawer below your oven that pulls out as well. High rise spring sprayer faucet. Three burner cooktop. It is a propane cooktop and oven. Flip down glass lid to give you a little more counter space if you're not cooking. Electric outlet and USB charger port over there as well. Here we have late switch, vent up and down button and on off button for a little fan that's in it. And that is basically a little vent fan that's located right up here. And then you have your digital thermostat for your propane furnace and your front AC. Looking toward the front side here, we have more drawers and cabinet space as well. Another little electric outlet and USB charger port on that counter area over there. All right, spinning back around, looking down the hallway area here, we have the bathroom on the left. There's also a window on the right there. So kind of starting from the top down here, back in the back corner, top corner there, is a vent fan, an exhaust fan. Um, being that this has got a loft and everything here, it actually has an exhaust that goes out that little sidewall and straight up. Um, ABS tub surround, sliding glass doors, porcelain foot flush toilet, some storage beside and below your sink area there, and a large medicine cabinet as well. But a decent size bathroom. Now here on the left, we have a staircase that's gonna take us up to the loft area. So going up here on the left side, it's more of a storage area on this side. I guess if you did have a small enough or skinny enough child, they could probably get in there, but might feel a little claustrophobic. Now over here's the actual loft portion. And basically you have some shelf space across the back, window on each side. The one on the left side here does actually open. It can be used as an emergency exit. Hopefully you never need it for that, but it can be done. You have your second air conditioner up here return. And then we'll pop up a picture here, kind of coming around this way. And you can see some storage space back there, light uh, switches there. And then also there is a little cubby area right here. And going back down your stairs here on the left is actually another little cabinet area here to store some goodies. And then behind the door here, we have the master bedroom. So you kind of step down into the bedroom area here. So over here we have another slide out. It's basically a closet slide. So you have two drawers in the middle with a little flip up door to give you some space up there and then hanging closet on each side of those drawers. You have overhead cabinet on each side above your bed area there. Little nightstands on each side, some storage underneath of there as well. Electric outlet, USB charger ports on each side. Both windows there open. And then you also have another window over here that'll open. 
kind of spin ourselves around here and right here kind of at the foot of the bed area is washer dryer hookup so you could do a combo washer dryer in here if you wanted to if not it is basically another hanging closet you have water lines and drain lines and electric outlet here as well Popping up the picture there, you can see the bed does raise up, so there is some storage underneath the bed, quite a bit of storage under there actually. And then you also have TV hookups on the wall here at the foot of the bed. So if you wanted to do a TV right there, you could. Not a lot changed as far as the overall layout, but a lot changed as far as colors and stuff from 2022 to 2023. All right, we're gonna head outside. I wanna show you around the outside and then we'll come back in and close the thing up. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, we're back on the outside of the brand new 2023 Sabre 37 FLL model here. Starting here on the door side of the RV. We have a white fiberglass exterior with a lower black metal skirting and some black accent trim, vinyl decals. You do have windows that are got kind of a coppered mirrored tent look to them. So a little bit different than last year's version window. Power awning, LED light strip on each arm, basically adjustable arms for tilting and you have a manual override in the front arm head in case of an electronic failure. The unit has a four point electric auto level jack system. So there are two jacks in the front with the quick pull pins and then two jacks behind the axles and you just push a button to kind of auto level. Now remember the jacks are only so long so if you're on too uneven a terrain you won't be able to have enough length. So just most campsites are fairly leveled out but depending on where you're at you may or may not have to put some blocks and stuff under them. Behind this door here, you have one of your two 20 pound propane tanks. Pretty good amount of storage space here. And over here you have cable outlet and electric outlet and a light switch. But you could feed your cable and electric line through the floor here and bring it outside and put a TV out here if you want and close your door. Little pet friendly leash latch holder there as well. Currently using the more ride entry step here. This is rated for 500 pounds, comes down, touches the ground, has adjustable feet. Traditional hover style step that some brands use is only rated for 300 pounds. So you get a heavier duty step. And when the kids are running in and out, it doesn't tend to shake and rock and roll the camper as bad. Also have a little step light back in there. Large folding entry handle here. And you also have your model number and some little informational stickers there next to that as well. Does have the black safety glass entry door with a window built in. Does also have the window by Lippert. That is Lippert Thin Shade Ready. So there's an aftermarket shade you can buy to put in there if you want. Over here we have kind of a little outdoor kitchen area. So you have a 110 volt mini fridge here hot and cold sink, little cabinet space. Now just down below down here is a gas line hookup. You can also see that enclosed underbelly down there. But there's a gas line hookup, so if you wanted to bring your own portable gas grill or something, you could plug it in right there and use your system. Double axle unit, easy lube hubs, drum brakes, and it also comes with these little green caps that actually change color when the tire pressure drops a little too low. So make sure you keep an eye on that and hopefully that'll help you as well. Now up in the top left there on the, uh, just to the left of the Sabre name is actually that bathroom vent that blows out. I said it went straight up. It actually comes straight out the side uh, when we were inside there. Slide outs on this particular unit the customer put slide out awning covers on there. So you could see here this slide topper 
which basically covers the top of the room. So that's gonna help shed away a lot of rainwater, leaves, twigs, debris, things like that, to basically help protect your room. Those are nice aftermarket item that you might consider adding. Talk with your salesperson about that. Now on the back here, you have a traditional flat back fiberglass rear end. The power cord is down here in the bottom corner. It's a 50 amp detachable power cord that plugs in right there. Up top here in the center, it has a rear observation camera. And that is standard on the unit. That camera is designed to connect to a smartphone and through an app basically, allowing you to use your phone to see what's going on behind you. That black rectangle there on the right is the Lippert prepping for the stow and go aftermarket ladder that you can buy. Basically it's a telescoping ladder that stretches up, attaches on right there and comes down, touches the ground. It's rated for about 350 pounds. So it is stronger than the mount on ladders like you might be able to see on the back of that Riverstone that's only rated for 250 pounds. Now the nice thing on this detachable besides being stronger is you can telescope it down, throw it in a storage compartment. You don't have to worry about your kids or somebody else's kids at the campground climbing up on your ladder, falling off, getting hurt, or just anybody climbing up onto your roof and possibly tearing stuff up. So a little bit of bonus with the detachable version versus the mount on versions. Now, real quick, looking up at the top of the roof here, you can kind of see, you know, air conditioner up there, plumbing stack vents, TV antenna. There's also a little solar panel up there as well. But you got to get up there from time to time and inspect and check out these things. Very, very important to maintain the roof of your RV. Now on around to the off door side here, just down below here, you can see one of your tank dumps. So there are two separate tank dumps on this model. One here, you can also see that uh, rear auto level jack system. Then just up in front of your axles here is going to be your second dump with some pull handles as well right here. Let's step back and kind of look down the whole side here. Really nice looking unit on the outside. Right in front of this slide, you have your furnace exhausting out right here, and you have your on-demand water heater right here. That's a nice feature there, especially with kids, if they wanna take a longer shower, if you got full hookups and stuff and could kinda of let the water just run out, um, you can actually get a nice hot long shower with an on-demand water heater. Now looking down below here, you can see the sewer hose holder and then you can also see the freshwater tank drain. And just back in behind there is some low point hot and cold water drains as well. Now right here we have our little docking station area they refer to it as. And you have hot and cold outside utility shower here, uh, winterizing bypass and black tank flush, city water inlet, gravity fill fresh water tank inlet, and some cable and satellite hookups as well. These little boxes that you see here in some of the storage compartments, those are for the Schwentech slides or Lippert in-wall slides. Right here you have your second 20 pound propane tank, but you also have your two-stage regulator here that you can flip the knob around and pick which bottle you're using. And it's red when it's off or empty, loss of pressure, and it turns green when you actually have pressure on the system.
Now, just in front of the door here, we have some very important informational stickers. I want to pop these up for you here real quick. The very first one popping up is your main production data sticker. This has the VIN number, axle sizes, uh, production date, but most importantly, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to. Axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined do not exceed that number. Next is your unloaded vehicle weight sticker, basically telling you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line, and it also has the length on it too. Next, cargo carrying capacity sticker, basically telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed the gross weight. And last but not least, tire sticker here, telling you tire size, but most importantly, cold tire pressure. All right, here in the front section here, you have the light switch for the front cap lights. You have the front jack button. Spare tire up in here, so it's out of the way. It's less likely to get stolen being in here instead of hanging off the bottom, and it's also out of the weather. And then you have room in here for one or two batteries. There's a battery disconnect back there, and there's also a solar charge controller back there that basically helps regulate the battery charging for the solar panels or from the solar panels. And let's see here, you kind of see nice heavy duty fiberglass front cap bubbled out fairly nicely, has some LED lights on it as well. All right, we're gonna head back inside. I want to close it up for you real quick, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back inside the brand new 2023 Sabre 37 FLL model here. And I wanna show you what it looks like closed. So when you are ready to close it up, you have to come back in here to your main control panel area here. Uh, so here's one of our digital thermostats. Also have the digital voltmeter, a couple light switches, water pump switch, and monitors for your holding tanks. Then we have our little LCI one screen. You'll also see a little QR scanner with a password and stuff here, so you can scan your phone and kind of connect into some stuff. Awning button, leveling jacks, slides, and some lights. We're gonna to go to the slide section here, and we have all four of our slide out buttons right here. So kind of looking forward here, we are gonna do sofa here. So hitting the button, you have a positive and minus sign on the button. The minus sign brings it in, the positive side sends it out. Very, very important when you're opening and closing these slides to make sure nothing is in the way. So make sure there's no you know, trees or electric poles, water poles or whatever at the campsite that you might accidentally run into. And also make sure there's no kids' toys or rocks, pebbles, twigs, things like that, that will also uh, interfere with the slide coming across the floor, or possibly damaging your floor. That is very, very important as well. And they are currently using the Lippert Schwintech slide or in-wall slide that some people refer to it as on the upstairs slides where the one in the kitchen is going to be a little bit different. But when it comes in, I could kind of step over the arm of my couch here and come on up into the front area here. Could maybe grab something out of you know, the cabinet if I needed to. But when it's closed up, it's fairly snug. And then when you're ready to take it back out, kind of do the same thing. You're just gonna hit the positive button and run it back out. Be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation. 
They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. They'll definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV if you're interested. I'd give them a call, check out their website, couchesrvnation.com. Also, if you don't mind, please hit that like button. If you want to keep up with some more of these videos, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell icon there to be notified as well. Okay, so next we are going to set the camera down back here. See if we can do this and make it somewhat visible. On this back slide here. So the button obviously is right here where we were on our LCI screen. And that'll bring that one straight in and straight out. Again, same thing, make sure that you know your cabinets and stuff are all closed up, nothing's in the way so you don't accidentally damage something. So you can see here when this is closed up, it actually comes over top of probably about, let's say five or six inches of the bed. But there's still a decent amount of room here where you could sleep here if you really needed to without opening up the slide. You're not able to really get to your washer dryer or closet area there, but you could still get to the rest of it. And obviously with the slide coming in over the bed a little bit, you're not going to be able to raise up the bed. And last but not least, we have the big slide here. And same thing, we're gonna hit the button, bring this right on in. So this slide kind of tilts upward at a little bit of an angle when it is actually coming in so that it can come over the main subfloor a little easier. And it kind of levels back out once it gets almost all the way in. Hear that ratchety sound that means it's all the way in this type of slide here is a worm gear slide so it does sound and operate a little different than the other three slides but when this is in you're not really squeezing back in here unless you move the table around a little bit now when the table comes in from the factory it actually has a few screws in that table to hold it in place um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to unscrew that and maybe put you some sort of little fasteners that you can quick unlatch. So if you do have to get in here, load your fridge or get something out of here, you could do a quick unsnap and kind of bring that table around and then walk around your area there. Um, so just a thought, you know, somebody might need to get in and out of there. But really truthfully, if you've got the room, it only takes a few seconds uh, to hit the button and just run the room out. It doesn't have to go all the way out. So if you're just trying to open it up a few inches to make sure you know you can come in here and load your refrigerator, you could do so. And then if you want to take it the rest of the way out or obviously bring it the rest of the way in, never leave them half in and half out a uh, case of rain or something because it will not seal properly unless it's all the way out or all the way in. So that's very, very important to keep up with. All right, guys, thanks again for taking the time to watch my RV videos. Really do appreciate it.